Well, now let's take a look at some of the basic ideas of the VI characteristic or voltage current characteristic for a two terminal device. We're showing a generic two terminal device that would have a voltage across its terminals and a current passing through the device. The current and the voltage indicate external behavior of the device that we could actually observe and measure. Now let's plot the current I as a function of the voltage V. And this plot is what we call the VI character. Now for linear devices, their behavior will be of this form. This is kind of like our generic linear equation for a line, y equals mx plus b. They will have a current voltage characteristic of this form. Current equals some slope value times v plus an offset. But how, how do we ascribe some meaning to slope and offset here? Well, recall that Ohm's law says that v equals i times r. Let me rewrite this as I equals one over R times V. And we might recall that the reciprocal of resistance is conductance given by the symbol G. Therefore, the slope of our line is conductance. Now the idea of offset, let me come back to that in a little bit. So I'll take the offset off and we will have I equals G times V. So here's one possibility for a particular slope of the line, and this would be the result for a resistor. Now as you vary the resistance, say to make it have increasing conductance, which would mean lower resistance, and then ultimately getting into the situation where the slope is infinite, which would correspond to a zero resistance device or a short, that would be one extreme of the resistor value. The other extreme is where the conductance equals zero, and in this case we have an open circuit. So we can see that as we vary the slope we get different situations for resistance. Now let me come back here and, and go with this idea of zero conductance, and I will then add an offset called I sub s. So that would then lift up this horizontal line and we would then get the characteristic for an ideal current source. All right, so that was a number of possibilities for linear devices. Now a nonlinear device would have a characteristic which is not a straight line. And there's a lot more nonlinear devices than linear devices out there actually. This idea of slope really comes in handy at this point because it indicates that the effective resistance of the device changes for different values of voltage and current. So we might see uh, the high, low, and medium uh, effective resistances as I've indicated here. Now let's switch gears here a little bit and talk about device power. Recall that device power is the product of its voltage and its current. Now if we have a characteristic that lives on the axes, then that means that one or the other of I and V is equal to zero. So we would have zero power when the characteristic is on the axes. Now supposing we are far away from the axes, that is both V and I are relatively large values. So high power means you're far away from the axis. More specifically, power greater than zero tells us that the device absorbs power. And so that's going to happen when both V and I are positive and when both V and I are negative. So you think of that as quadrants one and three. When power is negative, then the device delivers power, and that would be in these quadrants here, two and four.